Hey yo, what's good? It's Dino here and we're back with another video full of crazy clips from all over the world. I hope everybody's doing well. Let's hop right into it. Representatives is going to be fast tracking a vote next week on a bill that could lead to a national ban on TikTok. TikTok is messaging users, urging them to call Congress and oppose this bill. And for a closer look on this right now, we want to bring in Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers of Washington State. She chairs the House Energy and Commerce Committee, which voted unanimously to approve that measure yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chair, thank you for joining us this morning. Let's dig into this a little bit because uh, there have been so many states and uh, national representatives who have talked about the possibility of banning TikTok. This came a lot closer than people might have anticipated. This was a unanimous vote, 50 to nothing in your committee That's right. to push this out, and there's a vote coming to the full Congress. What do you anticipate the vote on the full floor will be? Well, I, I think that the, the, the vote in committee, the, the unanimous 50 to zero vote in committee underscores the, the concerns, the national security concerns related to apps that are controlled by foreign adversaries. And, and that includes TikTok, but it is foreign adversaries that are using apps to collect to manipulate, to surveil on Americans through the data that they are collecting. And it was, we had a, a, a classified hearing yesterday. Uh, the members responded to that and we're moving quickly on the floor because this, uh, because of the national security threat that's posed by these apps. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know anything about that, but they're uh, trying to ban TikTok. It's not just about Timu and all that. They're trying to ban TikTok and put all these social locks on uh, websites and stuff where you'll need like face logins and all that some heavy stuff some of that genocide was to be done by viruses and as most of you know the AIDS virus was created and there are others that are coming anthrax and, and uh, the bubonic plague you know all of these things are coming back new and improved I'm afraid to say because there's some really, truly crazy people that are in positions of power on our planet. Yeah, I believe it. Look up hell in Black's Law. Okay. Hell. The name formally given to a place under the exchequer chamber where the king's debtors were confined. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> yep. Joe Biden is trying to win the election by controlling the political content Americans see on TikTok, and he is now doing extreme things to try and ban TikTok again. The push to ban TikTok on supposed privacy concerns has been going on for years under the Biden administration, but the most likely reason why Biden is so in support of a total TikTok ban is because unlike other platforms, TikTok supports and features both liberal and conservative content. A huge part of TikTok's audience and and content is conservative and that scares Biden. Because with the election coming up, Biden knows that if he doesn't censor TikTok, then the platform will push conservative content, which hurts his campaign. Donald Trump saw right through <laughs> this and posted on his true social platform that he is absolutely against banning TikTok, as doing so would give other worse platforms like Facebook even more power. But Biden isn't backing down, as he is currently supporting a bill in Congress that if passed will essentially ban TikTok from every phone and computer in the United States. Hmm. I still like that ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. I don't it's not gonna happen. So apparently there's a thing called the Dybbuk box, which is a one of the most haunted items in the world, apparently. And he wanted to so we took the glass case off of the Dybbuk box, which is in his museum in Vegas. And he thought it was a sick ass idea to put the ashes of a lady who died while she was possessed on top. Whoa. And then I was, my plane almost crashed. I was in a car accident. 
my house got robbed and I had bite marks on my arm. Wild, dude. Don't mess with that stuff. Yeah, I mean, what were they doing in the first place? There's a platform there for a reason. Did you know that the use of subliminal messages in advertising has been outright banned in many parts of the world? Why? The answer comes down to the power of the subconscious mind and its ability to influence your behavior. In fact, 95% of all of our behavior is completely under the control of the subconscious mind. So what the subconscious is programmed for is what we are literally driven to do, have or be. You can use the power of subliminal messaging in your own life. Simply play positive affirmations for what you want out loud while you sleep. Your subconscious mind will then accept these statements as truth while your conscious mind sleeps. And you will be subconsciously driven to do, have or be the very thing affirmed. Yep, it's true. Um, the more you focus and uh, go towards the things that you want, the more things will align around you to fit that focus. Now, I, I've been having trouble. I was thinking about not doing interviews anymore because I did the Jordan Belfort one, and I don't. I didn't like him, honestly. I didn't like him, and I hate to say that, but I didn't. I didn't like him. Mm. And I didn't, but I didn't do a good job of trying to figure out what was going on with him or figure out like what made him, you know, seem greedy or behave a certain way or, or just, I don't know. I feel like I probably could have tried to do a better job of connecting with him. Um, and so, uh, I don't know. We're going to try and just look at a different way that we can do uh, interviews and who we interview mm -hmm. to make it more of an experience that I can be comfortable in and enjoy and want to engage in. You know, I wish I would have asked him, you know, or talked about greed and what I think about greed and where I find greed in my life and how I could have related it to him or I don't know. I just felt like uh, and I'm not being hard on myself. I just want to do it well. I don't want like wasting people's time. Right, I don't like wasting people's time either. It's, <laughs> it's the worst. Is that at a store? Oh. Y'all, they found bed bugs in Burlington. And I don't think that's too far fetched because probably like a week before Christmas, I went to a TJ Maxx home goods store here in the Nashville area. And I was looking for yoga pants and they had a fresh new shipment. So they had a ton of them and there were ants crawling in and out of like the pants and mm -hmm. i thought to myself whoa you won't be buying no yoga pants tonight but that was the first time i ever saw critters on clothes in a tj maxx or even in a clothing store so bed bugs is wild but just watch your clothing when you go to places like that and just Please make sure do. you ain't bringing nothing home yeah, and watch that stuff before you wear it. That's wild, man. There's bed bugs at a freaking department store. No. Oh. oh my Ooh. god. Ooh. Oh my god. Ooh. See, that's Holy why I don't shit. live up north. Stuff like that. That's crazy. If your dog does that, immediately leave your house because you are in danger. It's quite evident that this dog looks terrified in this video. This phenomenon is common among dogs and even cats. They have the ability to see things invisible to us. These things are known as skinwalkers. They have the ability to become invisible or visible to animals' eyes. And in the worst case scenario, they can also take possession of your pet. However, mm -hmm. there's a simple method to determine whether your pet is possessed or not. This dog seems extremely disturbed by what it sees and the worst part is that its owner can't even help because she sees nothing to comfort it she asked her dog to come back to the couch as she saw it shaking like a leaf and she didn't want anything serious to happen to it if you're afraid that your dog is possessed by a skinwalker or you're certain that your dog is already possessed follow these steps to the letter 
and you can save your dog's life before it attacks you in your sleep. Click here, copy the link, and paste it into the search bar. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous, and the video with the fake Kujo and everything. Earth is getting a new map update, and some of the changes are unexpected, like new islands. Meanwhile, cities all over the East Coast are starting to sink, some as much as one centimeter per year. So how could it be possible that some places are rising and some places are sinking? It's actually pretty simple. Greenland is basically one giant ice sheet, and ice weighs a lot, and that puts a lot of pressure on the sediment, which forces it down. And we've put that giant ice cube in a man-made sauna for the past 100 years or so, and now it's starting to sweat a lot. So in the past 10 years, the bedrock of Greenland has risen 20 centimeters, which is way more than it would have just on its own. So all that ice is melting off of Greenland and into the ocean, and now the East Coast is sinking. Places like New York City, Long Island, Baltimore, and Virginia Beach are being particularly affected. All of those cities are seeing areas of rapid subsidence, which basically just means sinking land. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very easy to picture sea level rise looking something like this. In a lot of places, it's going to look something more like this as rising waters permeate the sediment and cause the top layer to collapse in on itself. Right. Subsidence is already happening in a major way in Florida, where entire high-rise buildings have collapsed due to increasing subsidence. But at least once Florida is underwater, there will be some new land up for grabs in Greenland. Shout out to Taylor <laughs> Swift for sponsoring this new update. Luckily, she was able to find parking for her private jet just in time to make it to the Super Bowl. He said shout out to Taylor Swift. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, definitely looking forward to seeing what the new maps look like. <laughs> That's great. Y'all are stupid. Yo, no, 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 no. Don't, don't ever do the kind of things that you just saw in that video. That's, that's the dumbest thing you can possibly do is go into uh, a tunnel that's that thin and narrow with an active railroad track like why would you why why did they do that no 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 moving on the presiding officer my colleague from the state of illinois has legislation which addresses one aspect of that her bill and i hope i describe it accurately says that if you are an undocumented person in this country and you can pass the physical and the required test background test the like you can serve in our military, and if you do it honorably, we will make you citizens of the United States. That's insane. Do we need that? Do you know what the recruiting numbers are at the Army and the Navy and the Air Force? They can't reach their quotas each month. They can't find enough people to join our military forces. And there are those who are undocumented who want the chance to serve and risk their lives for this country. Should we give them a chance? Hell no! I think we should. Mm, how do y'all feel about that? Leave me some comments below. Let's have a talk. Mr. Shoot, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? Rest in peace, TikTok, as the government has decided to get rid of it again during an election year. A bipartisan crusade, I would say witch hunt, against TikTok. Bipartisan. Well, let's hear both sides. Let's listen to Tucker Carlson talk about this. This is not an effort to push back against China. 
It's part of a strategy to make America much more like China with the government in charge of what you read and see and with terrifying punitive powers at their fingertips. That was Tucker Carlson talking about the Restrict Act from last year. Restrict, where they want to restrict us, the United States citizen. This isn't just about TikTok. This is about complete restriction on the internet. This is scanning your face to get into certain websites. This is Homeland Security times one million. So will they pass this? No, but give it time. Before long, <laughs> Democrats and Republicans will all bow down to the same ruler of the United States. Eventually. We won't have a president, we'll have a king or a tyrant or something of that sort. But there you go. What do you guys think about this? Like I said, man, what they're trying to do is ridiculous, it's wild, and it's a complete invasion of all data privacy. Um, it's not going to happen. Not anytime soon. Стреляют, суки, вовсю. Еба. That'd be crazy to just like be walking around outside and that's what you hear down the road. No way, man. Oh my god, Peter! Peter, what are you doing? Crack? What the f is another one that continues the videos from uh, the one in the last video with the lady in her driveway. You can hear it this time. It's coming towards us. Yeah, that, that one's a little more uh, convincing. I don't know what that was. It's pretty cool looking, though. Breaking news, America. This just in. President Biden announces tax incentives for families willing to enslave migrants in a new housing for labor incentive. I'm not kidding for this. Look at this. You can now apply to keep a migrant in your home in exchange for them cooking, cleaning, picking crops and landscaping etc for you yep. holy crap dude the president of the united states has just came out and made it legal for slavery again in the united states of america are y'all not seeing this wow guys this right here is absolutely asinine this has to stop does anybody else not see this we have just gone back to complete slavery in the United States of America. Whoa! No, 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 no. This has to stop. Stay safe, America. I think that that is a very bad thing. It is a very bad thing. And uh, it's going to cause a lot of problems. More problems than not. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Who's there? Yeah, that's wild. That would uh, drive me insane. I'd have to leave. 
Vladimir Putin has just assassinated someone in Spain. Y'all remember that Russian pilot who defected to Ukraine last year with his helicopter? Well, Russia sure did. Last September, Maxim Kuzminov made international headlines when he flew his Russian military helicopter across the border to Ukraine and surrendered. And at some point, Maxim decided to leave Ukraine and set himself up in Spain. And it would have been fine had he not contacted his ex-girlfriend in Russia and told her to come visit him and gave her his address. But instead of her showing up at the door, it was a pair of assassins who riddled him with hot lead. I guess polonium was so 2023. Putin has been brazenly eliminating his enemies living in foreign countries for years now. He even tried unsuccessfully to do it on US soil in 2020. And it seems like the West continues to be powerless to stop him. Whether the timing of this assassination with the death of Alexei Navalny is just coincidence or an indication that Putin is going on a spree remains to be seen. Stay tuned. Yo, that's wild right there. Imagine like, <laughs> wow, defecting, then after you defect, you move away. And then after you move away, you contact somebody you knew and then end up, that's, that's wild. That was cool. Chicago just went off the rails here. They just unanimously voted to remove school resource officers from campus. Essentially, they have removed the police officers from the campus. Mm. And the mayor of Chicago is saying that this is in an effort to make the school ground feel more holistic, more comfortable for the students. So by taking away a safety measure for the students, it's supposed to make the students feel more safe, more comfortable. <laughs> How, in what world is taking away a police officer from a campus supposed to make you feel better about your safety? Especially with all of the school pew-pewings that we've been seeing. How does taking away an officer make that better? I don't understand. And also they want this to be done by... I don't know. Um, before the start of the next school year. So it's happening. They already voted on it. I, I don't even know what to say anymore. This is. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, I got nothing to say about that either. That's wild. Like, how in the world are you going to think that that's going to help, especially in a place like Chicago? I've been there. <laughs> don't do that. CDC update and COVID roundup for February 23rd, 2024. Since last week, we're down about 6% in new hospital admissions due to COVID, and we're down about 11% in deaths due to COVID. Putting this into context for new hospital admissions, we had nine sharp weeks of increases, followed by four weeks of gradual decreases. Last week, we had a small increase, and this week, we have a decrease once more. For deaths due to COVID, we are on our third week of decreases. And then as an aside, I just want to put a reminder out there that hospitals will no longer be required to report COVID hospitalizations. Oh, that's interesting. No longer required to report them. I'm like so happy and so excited. You have no idea. A glory hallelujah. First UFOs and aliens being confirmed and now dragons. <laughs> but like side note, as an indigenous Mexican, I already knew that they were real. Like we have Quetzalcoatl. I love it. How y'all feel about that? They're saying dragons are real now and claiming to have found skeletons and remains. ...is imposing a new round of sanctions against Russia in response to the ongoing war and the recent death of Alexei Navalny. The sanctions are the largest since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. 
Treasury Department says the sanctions will target the Kremlin's war machine, specifically more than 500 targets that federal officials say are contributing to Russia's repression, human rights abuses and aggression against Ukraine. These include mm. drone and industrial chemical manufacturers, technology suppliers, as well as Russian financial institutions. White House officials are also saying the sanctions will be aimed at Russia's allies across China, Southeast Asia, as well as the Middle East. Now, as Chris pointed out, the sanctions come on the eve of the second anniversary of Russia's war with Ukraine and exactly one week week after the questionable death of Alexei Navalny, an outspoken critic of Putin and the Kremlin. This morning at a meeting with U.S. governors, the president addressed the need to respond to Russia and the resolve of the Ukrainian people. Take a listen. Putin believed he could easily bend the will and break the resolve of the free people of Ukraine, that he could roll into Ukraine and he would roll over them. Two years later, he remains wrong. He didn't do that. He wasn't able to do that. Kiev is still standing. Ukraine is still free. And the people of Ukraine remain unbowed and unbroken. Mm hmm. Some wild stuff. Uh, it's never going to calm down over there, is it? I would not be stunned, surprised to find out the Russians notified Washington that they've placed a nuclear weapon, a warhead in space hovering over North America that's capable of delivering an electromagnetic pulse attack over North America. You don't blow up satellites with nukes. That's no. crazy. It would be the worst nightmare, folks. You'd be better off to be incinerated with a nuclear warhead than to live after an EMP attack. Why do I say that? Because you're still alive, but there's no life. You're back to the 1600s. No technology at all. Nothing. No way to pump water, no electricity, no utilities of any kind, no food, no transportation, no trucks hauling food, no farmers, tractors not moving. All your gadgets in your house are fried. Everything electrical is fried. You're not fried. The gadgets are fried. Well, you think, well, we'll get it fixed. Well, how are you going to fix it when nothing works? And guess where all the circuit boards and transformers From are? China. Yes. Our electrical grid can't be fixed because all the parts come from China. And China's just going to sit back and watch us starve. Years ago, James Woolsey, former CIA director, told me, and this was a personal conversation I had with him. He said that within one year, 90% of the American people would be dead. Not from the blast, but from the implosion of society. The lack of food, a lack of water, a lack of medical care, the lack of heat, um, just the chaos, the crime. He, they, the CIA expects 90% of the population to die within 12 months after an EMP attack. That's what I think the Russians have threatened to deliver to the United States. It'll be the worst nightmare. You just don't want, you don't want to live in that world. And there's no way out. There's no place to go. Canada's going to be taken out. Mexico's going to be taken out. Where are you going to go? You're going to walk one foot? What are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? How long can you walk to get to South America? This mm -hmm. is the nightmare that we would have. Yeah, I've been telling everybody when the blackout comes, watch. It's going to go crazy. Try your best to stay safe. Video shows a Russian fuel depot on fire. Russian state media claims it was caused by a Ukraine drone. Hmm, they claim that was done by a drone. I need to see more evidence. We just got back from the Washington, D.C. Ukrainian march, which was fantastic. We started at the Lincoln Memorial before going down the mall to the White House. Then we went to the Russian embassy where everyone took turns giving the middle finger to the Russian flag that is still standing there. And of course, we chanted, we sang, and we celebrated Ukrainian culture while also once again flicking off the Russian flag. There were a lot of things that happened in Ukrainian news today, which obviously I didn't get time to really report on because driving there is like four hours each way. Mm -hmm. And so really, I'm going to do some reports later, but I have to say, TikTok, what the heck is going on? Because they suppressed every single video I did today. This video has been up for what three or four hours. This one, three or four hours. This one over here for five hours. They went out of their way to suppress Ukrainian videos today, which is absolutely insane. Why? I have no idea. I mean, you could go ahead and guess on your own. But those were my videos. I had so many people messaging me, were you not going to put any videos up today? No, the videos were up. It's just... You know, for some reason, TikTok is just being TikTok. Anyway, stay tuned. I've got some videos headed your way very shortly. 
Mm. Yeah, that guy's always posting stuff from right there in the middle of everything. A total solar eclipse is going to occur over the United States on April 8th. This photo, you can see the path it's going to take. And I've gotten messages, comments, and people asking in my live streams about this total eclipse. Because some people are actually freaking out a little bit, wondering if it's a sign of something to come, if something's up. And that's not strange in the least, because there's a history that goes along with solar eclipses. Different cultures all over the world had different ideas of what the solar eclipse meant. But in current time, there's a lot of people like me who have a gut feeling that something is going on in the world. Something's about to happen. And with this eclipse crossing paths with another eclipse that happened seven years ago, seven years, that's key. Some people are wondering if this is part of prophecy. Now I'm the wrong person to ask about anything Bible related. It's really not my area. But I do wonder if this eclipse could connect with what I'm feeling about the change that's coming, the change in our world. And like I said, the fact that this eclipse is going to cross paths where the other one came seven years ago, I can understand people's concern. I'm wondering if anybody else has any feelings or concerns about this eclipse that's about to happen on April 8th. If you can, let me know what those concerns are in my comment section, because I'm curious if it's just me and the handful of people I talk to, or if it's really a lot of us. Okay, shabadoo, booskies. Shabadoo. Yeah, um, a lot of people are going wild over that eclipse over on the internet. There's like TikToks, there's Facebook videos, there's Instagram videos, there's like articles, all kinds of stuff. People are going crazy over that and they think something bad might happen. I'm not, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be over in the path of totality area, so I'll see it. In Haiti, where the government has declared a state of emergency after an explosion of violence, including two major prison breaks. Armed gunmen attacked the country's biggest prison over the weekend, allowing some of Haiti's most notorious gang leaders to escape. Prison authorities say the attack carried out by armed gangs led to the escape of a large number of the 4,000 prisoners held there. On Sunday, journalists roamed the normally overcrowded facility where its cells were eerily empty with no guards in sight, the injured and the dead laying nearby. At mm. least five people were killed at the prison, where now fewer than 100 inmates remain. A second prison that holds another 1,400 inmates was also stormed. Saturday's siege came as a shock, even to Haitians accustomed to living under the constant threat of violence, and is yet another example of how criminal gangs have gained more control of the country since the assassination of former President Jovenel Moise in 2021. Because what you've seen in the last couple of days is all the gangs practically have risen up. Since Thursday, gangs have targeted police stations and fired shots near the international airport, even forcing American Airlines to suspend flights yesterday and today. The people inside Port-au-Prince I mean, honestly, they're trapped in the concerns of the rapidly deteriorating situation is that we're seeing this perfect storm and not knowing where it's going to lead the Haitian people. Mm, that's wild, dude. More stuff where there's just people shooting out in the streets. Like, what is wrong with the world right now, man? And more and more people are now moving back home with their parents in order to save money. Realtor.com surveyed people who plan to buy a home in the next year. They found 29% of people surveyed already moved back. Another 22% would consider moving back home with their parents. <laughs> yeah, it's hard out here. I understand that. Look at all these houses in Florida allegedly painting their roof blue. Blue, of all colors. Now, I know you've seen that video of that big green laser straight down. Look, it's fake. It's fake. It's the same person who did the face by the moon, same person who did the old man. They're all fake. If you go to his mm -hmm. page, it's a whole bunch of CGI videos he makes himself. Now, there was a real green laser scanning the area I'm about to show you. But first, let's look at what Biden said in general. Because a lot of, if you fly over these areas that are burned to the ground, you'll see in the midst of 20 homes that are just totally destroyed, one home sitting there because they had the right roof on it. And anyway, since I took office, Phoenix provided to Texas alone. That is pretty weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the news report of the real green laser. Pause. The plane 
flying low over people's homes, scanning the ground with that green laser. Welcome back, I'm Chris Claudia. And I'm Lois Tomey. So what does this plane, what is it doing? Wake News anchor Annette Montgomery joins us in the studio. And Annette, what did you learn? Well, Chris and Lois, I learned who it's not after reaching out to everyone from the city of Cape Coral to the county, to the Florida Division of Emergency Management, to the South Florida Water District and Port Authority. Now, these low-flying planes with green lasers does not belong to them. One neighbor got so fed up, she purchased a flight radar to help narrow down the search for the owner. And besides that, with that original green laser video being fake, that everyone saying was in Texas, you know, it wouldn't have to be green. You, there's a lot of speculation about the colors. I'm about to show you a video real quick where allegedly a, a laser specialist says that the infrared laser is actually the most dangerous and you can't even see it in the first place. Ooh, look at all those awesome laser beams. Do you know which one's the strongest? If you guess the green one, you're wrong. I'm sorry, that's actually a trick question. It's actually the invisible one. That's an infrared laser. Pretty crazy, right? Mm hmm. It is pretty crazy, right? So from what I'm hearing, it's some sort of uh, vape shop. This morning, there are global Facebook and Instagram uh, outages. Uh, there has been a massive outage that has taken place. So if you're somebody that woke up this morning and took a look at your social media platform, Facebook or Instagram, and noticed that it was down, uh, you are not alone. So these outages took place globally. Wanted to share with you the latest coming out on this. They're saying a lot of people are saying that it's been restored. But uh, a lot of them went down across the world today. Uh, Facebook and Instagram users report meta services are down. People reported issues with the website starting around 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time today, according to Down Detector, a website that tracks user reports on Internet disruptions. Now, uh, we currently don't have the cause of it as of yet, but this is very similar to what we experienced not too long ago with AT&T going down. Um, and a lot of people skeptical as to what actually happened there. Now, AT&T reporting that it was a database issue, that there was some uploading errors. However, at the same time, other reports coming out that AT&T in the past has had cyber attack issues and other things and not reported it to the public. So they're saying even if it was something else, they're likely not going to tell us. Now, for this Facebook and Instagram outage, and as you know, those are uh, uh, two social media platforms, both owned by Meta. Both of those had massive disruptions globally. To they ain't never gonna tell y'all. It's all about data collection. It all went down so they could clone it. <laughs> eat, 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 my boy. Violence is erupting. Tel Aviv is on fire. The protesters are calling for Benjamin Netanyahu and his government to step down. The Israelis are protesting for a ceasefire and demanding that Israel reach an agreement with the age group to release the hostages. If you don't know, real, uh, Israelis have been running away from any ceasefire deal. They don't want a ceasefire and their people are demanding a ceasefire. After all this, Israel is failing and their government is failing. Their army has failed and they have not achieved a single thing. It's beautiful to watch their own people telling their own government to step down. This is what the age group has achieved. They're causing chaos and they've destroyed the IDF in Gaza. They're just sending them back in white sheets to their families. And it's not stopping anytime soon so long as Israel does not agree to a ceasefire deal. Can y'all just stop? Can everybody just stop? Like, that's really sad. Look at this! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, it's a bomb inside the, the BBC. Oh my god, oh my god, these people are really suffering. There are no safe places in Gaza. That's crazy. Y'all, this is absolutely heartbreaking. Yesterday, a trailer burnt down with a father and three young children inside. The trailer is diagonally across from a trailer that 
we actually rent out to some people. A father and a one-year-old little girl are currently on life support. This happened to a family of seven yesterday morning, and they completely lost everything. This is very heartbreaking. So, the mother, Kaylee, was not home. She was gone with two of her other daughters. The father, Austin, and his three young children were inside of the home sleeping when it caught on fire. They are currently investigating to see what caused the fire, but y'all, this man right here... He fought so hard to save his children. He kept going back inside, trying to find them and get them out. The smoke was so thick and there were flames everywhere. It took them 15 to 20 minutes to be able to locate one-year-old Keegan. She also goes by Kiki. She was found unresponsive with no heartbeat. They were able to bring her back. She is currently in critical condition. She has carbon monoxide poisoning on her lungs and is currently on life support. About 15 hours ago, Kaylee said that Kiki was still the same. She had been opening her eyes and closing them, which was normal, but she said it gave her hope that she had brain activity. Austin had to be flown to a hospital in Louisville. Here is the GoFundMe because, guys, they need a lot of help. They had just bought this home last year. They are a younger couple. Austin has lung burns and third degree burns on his hands. The two other little boys that were inside of the home, they are doing okay according to Kaylee. She said that they are very traumatized and are asking for their sister. They had a family dog that sadly passed in the fire. Please keep this family in your prayers that they recover. I just cannot imagine what they are going through. But on top of this mother having to worry about her husband and her baby fighting for their lives, she has to worry about a home, clothes. I mean, they lost literally every single thing. So I offer to help share the GoFundMe and this list of things. If you guys want to donate or if you have any clothes or just any, any household items, anything that you want to donate, just message me or the GoFundMe is going to be linked in my bio. Down here at the bottom is also Austin's cash app. Mm -hmm. That's really sad. I'm so sorry that happened to y'all. Anyways, I got one more for you guys. Okay, so I know this is a topic of discussion like every single year. They really are looking into banning TikTok so mm -hmm. much so that they added a link right here. If you click on it, you can put in your zip code and you can directly call your representative, which I just did. Even though I'm in Japan, my representative is in Idaho where my home address is. So I called and I left them a message sharing my concerns about banning TikTok. It was really simple, really easy, and I knew they were closed so i just left a message so i didn't have to talk to anyone anyways it was super simple super easy i just said as a representative i would hope that they would take in everyone's concerns about the ban of tiktok and if you're watching this video then obviously you're here for a reason and you enjoy tiktok just as much as i do i believe once you go to post this video you have the option to add the link so if you're gonna post a video anytime soon um, might as well just add the link to it. To add the link, just go to where you're going to post a video, click the plus sign and add link, and then it's going to automatically have the option to keep the TikTok link available. And let me know where you live and if you called your representative or not. Man, that's wild. What do y'all think about this whole TikTok shutdown that's going on that they're trying to do? What do you think about that? Let's talk about it because that's wild to me. Because, like, that's mainly what we react to over here. That's what we look at a lot over here. It's we look at a lot of TikToks and from all over, from everywhere, from all sorts of users. And that would just be really suck if they took it away. Anyways, that's another video for the archives. I hope that everyone had fun hanging out. I appreciate all of you for coming through every time I post a new video. Go ahead and do me a favor. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Yes, Dino. Okay, Dino. Share this video with all your friends on all your social medias. Hit the notification bell. That way you can get updated every single time that we get a new video. And uh, yeah, until next time. Peace.